Welcome back to Project 380 and today I'm going to be upgrading the fuel pump. Usually when upgrading your fuel pump in an MX-5 you do this job while the fuel tank is still in the car. But I've removed mine. Over the last couple of weeks I've actually taken the subframe out of the back of the car and the fuel tank and everything else. I've been grinding down all the rust and repainting everything. So I thought there'd be no better time to upgrade the fuel pump rather than now as it's really easy for me to get to and really easy for me to film. As I've still got the hard top on the car and the soft top, but I've got no space to store the hard top. So I couldn't really film it anyway, as I can't put the soft top up. As the access hole for the fuel pump is gonna be underneath the folded down soft top. But I'll show you this access hole in a future video where there's gonna be one more little upgrade that I'm gonna have to do for the fuel pump itself. So now onto the fuel pump. Why would you want to upgrade your fuel pump? Well, if you're shooting for above 200 horsepower, at some point you are going to run out of fuel. The fuel pump just won't be able to keep up with the injector requirements and you'll start having little misfires and you won't make any more power. First off I'm going to remove the old fuel pump and then I'll show you what I've got to replace it with. So when you've gained access to the top of your fuel tank it'll look a little something like this. The earlier models where they don't have a return system will have one less pipe so I think this pipe will be missing but this is a Mark II with a return fuel system. So the fuel comes up from the pump out of this one and then the excess fuel returns in this one. So now we need to remove this cover. Don't worry about removing that, that is just a pressure relief valve for the fuel tank itself. So now we can remove the fuel pump or fuel sender unit, whichever you like to call it. But be careful as part of it is going to be the fuel level sensor which is just a thin wire so make sure not to bend it or else your fuel level readings will be wrong. So looking at the fuel sender as a whole. First of all this is the float which indicates your fuel level in your tank. Floats up when there's more fuel and lowers down when there's less fuel. This is the wire which uh, you got to be careful not to bend when getting it out of the tank as you can snag it on the edge of the tank, bend it and it will give you a false representation of what fuel you've got in the tank. Next, the fuel pickup sock. This stops any debris that is in the tank going up into the motor. Next you've got the motor and this is the bit we're going to replace. So I'm going to flip this over and start off by disconnecting this blue connector here which is linked to the fuel pump. Next I'm going to remove the fuel line clips. So this one doesn't want to slide up, the uh, fuel line itself is a little bit swollen up. Next is to remove this Phillips screw here. Now you should be able to wiggle the fuel pump off of the tube. So to upgrade the standard fuel pump, I'm going to replace it with an AEM 340 litre per hour fuel pump. This will flow 340 litres per hour at 40 psi. The standard MX-5 runs at 43.5 psi. So why have I gone for a 340 litre per hour fuel pump when I could probably get away with a Walbro 255? Well, like I said in a previous video, when I'm at the dyno, I don't want a lack of fuel to be my excuse. This is complete overkill for what I'm going for, but hopefully the fuel pump will be less taxed and not working anywhere near as hard. Therefore, it should last longer, and if I did in the future go for even more power, I don't need to upgrade it any further as it's already there. So the old fuel pump, I'm not going to chuck that away just yet as I still need a couple of things off of it. So in this fuel pump kit, you get the fuel pump, a new piece of fuel hose, a protective cover for the top, the bottom gasket, 
I think a bit of insulation to reduce the noise from the fuel pump, a new fuel sock, push ring to secure the fuel sock, a new patch lead, and two fuel clips. So the fuel pump requires a little bit of assembly first before it goes into the fuel sender unit. Gonna start off by taking off the bottom cap and then placing the fuel sock on. Make sure it's all the way down. Next is for the little push ring that goes onto the little plastic tab here to secure the sock on. Next for the little rubber bit at the bottom. Then for the foam insulation. and then for the top rubber. But before I put that on, I just want to bring you in closer to look at the top. This side is marked positive and this side is marked negative. We shouldn't need to remember that as the wires are color coded. But with the rubber bit on the top, you won't be able to see that. Now we can take off the top plastic cap and put the new fuel pipe on it. Slide the two Jubilee clips down, and now it's ready to go onto the fuel sender unit. So before filming, I had a little practice run of fitting the new fuel pump onto the sender unit. And I've modified this bracket here to fit the new fuel pump, but the fuel pump overall is a slight bit longer, and it fouls on the pickup pipe. So I'm gonna have to cut down the pickup pipe just a little bit. Now that's all deburred and cleaned up, I could put the new fuel pump on. Now for the wiring. Our new patch lead needs the blue connector put on this end. So I'm gonna unravel this, cut the end off, and solder them together. Now the sender unit with the new fuel pump is ready to go back into the fuel tank. Now the fuel tank complete with the new fuel pump is ready to go back into the car. But before I do that, I'm gonna take you underneath the car and show you what I've been up to for the last couple of weeks and why the fuel tank is out. So I've spent a bit of time getting out the rear subframe, the fuel tank, grinding down any rust, repainting everything and treating the chassis. I've also replaced all the fuel lines and the breather lines with AN6 lines. And I've replaced the fuel filter with a removable washable fuel filter with AN6 connections. Now to fit the fuel tank. To make this easier, if you can see it just here, there is a little hook. There's a hole in the fuel tank that you can hook that up onto and then put the bolts in to make the installation a little easier. So that's the fuel pump upgraded, the fuel tank back in, and the back end all nice and clean. The fuel pipes and the plug for the fuel pump I will be plugging in in a future episode, as there's a little upgrade I need to do and I need to gain access to it all from inside the car. So next time I'm gonna be playing with the inside of the car, and there is a reason why I'm not playing with the engine just now. 
Because I put the engine in without the gearbox, the engine is tilting slightly forward. So if I make pipes or make a wiring harness, everything's gonna be slightly at the wrong length. So to get the engine back nice and level, I'm gonna have to put the gearbox in. But I don't really want to put the gearbox in without putting a clutch in it first. So if you guys have got any suggestions for the clutch I should run, please leave it down in the comments below. I am going to be keeping the standard six speed gearbox in this car. So if you guys have got any suggestions for clutches I should use, please leave them suggestions in the comments down below. I haven't yet decided what clutch I'm going for, so that's why I'm doing a few other things in the meantime. So that's all for today. If this video did help you put in your new fuel pump, let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time inside the car.